Hi everybody. Uh, sorry it's been so long since I got to you, but a very small little bee, a wasp actually, um, and I'm allergic. It took me down. I was walking into the greenhouse and the wasp we didn't know had built a great big nest in behind the orange tree. Wasps. And I noticed a few in there, and Jack's really good at keeping, whenever he sees a little nest starting of the wasps, because they will build in so many different places, he takes a long pole and knocks them down, and the yard is pretty good, everything's pretty good, but all of a sudden there's wasps in the greenhouse. So anyway, I am allergic, as a lot of people are, and I got... He got tangled on my long hair on this side, well, short hair, and my earring, and he bit me twice. So, uh, <laughs> I used to have to carry a, an EpiPen, well, I was still supposed to, but uh, I didn't carry one because they were getting like $75, and they're over $100 now. I mean... <laughs> I just, I, I couldn't figure it out because here we are in Canada and we give free drug shots to uh, people addicted and uh, uh, us uh, seniors, um, it's not covered on our medical and if you want one, that's what you pay. So I know there's worse things out there. So anyway, I, <laughs> I hadn't had one. So I ran in the house and I took to Benadryl because they really do help and if they're on an arm or something it's not not as bad for me. I've been bit on the finger and swelled up to the shoulder and stories like that so there's usually a week of suffering that follows but anyway it was on the ear so like just instantly down to the neck swell up and into my mouth and my lips that's when I <laughs> decided I better go to the hospital. So they put me on the intravenous Benadryl and gave me a shot of adrenaline. And, you know, <laughs> four hours later, and you still go over the after effects. Everything swells up. And, and uh, I mean, I was still mobile, but I looked like something out of a horror movie. So <laughs> anyway, we survived and we're back. <laughs> so... Anyway, I decided, oh, it's been so long, and all my orchids, except the ones in bloom or spike, are outside. And our weather has been extremely hot, but just today and yesterday, we took a cool trend, and then we're going back to really hot. So, in the solarium, it's been over a hundred many days, but it cools down at night. And I've only been watering once a week still so I and I do mist every day so I think I'm going to be starting there's more hot weather coming uh, the major watering will be Monday and then I'll have you know Friday or something I'll give them a dribble with the watering can uh, a good dribble so I just wanted to show you a few things now the purple orchid, deep purple I called her. Now she's one of my oldest orchids and we've had many, many uh, enjoyable months with her blooms. So I just went back into YouTube and that's one good thing about YouTube. Uh, even if you, you know, if you start a channel and you don't want to uh, have a bunch of subscribers, and you don't want to really carry it on and be there all the time, you could do it for your own information because I went back and I thought, hmm, when, did, when was she in Spike? Well, she was in Spike uh, starting in December. And then um, the blooms came January the 30th. And I, I watched. So January the 30th, and here we are... Um, um, you know, almost the end of July. So I would say <laughs> that is excellent. Now, if you can see the bottom bloom is hanging and she's lost three or four on the top. But uh, the rest of them 
are still doing pretty good. Let's see if I can get that in there a little closer. There we go. So, um, pretty soon, I'm not sure when, but pretty soon I'll probably be trimming the spike off and she'll be going outside with the others. And so that's one thing I wanted to, sh to share with you. And um, the other thing is, how are they doing in the heat out there with only one watering? I noticed some could probably, I could have started sooner, but <laughs> I wasn't real energetic. But I am probably going to start now. I'll be watering twice a week. But I just want to show you how they are doing. So... Um, this is the, the triple sewer pot, that heavy plastic melanie. And this is with no misting this morning because we were out. And look at this. I mean, and inside you can see, let's see if I can get this closer. You can see down in here, even though these bark are very dry, you can see way down inside, let's see, you can see that they're not really suffering that much. Look down into this one. Whoop! I get this right. There's new roots coming. And so this is the back. This was Jack's, I called, and you can see green roots through here. So, you can if I can get it right. So even through some of the holes, you can see the roots going. Now, they didn't get misted, and I usually mist every day, and sometimes in the afternoon. But you can see that they are doing really well. They're out in the patio. They're uh, getting extremely hot in the daytime. I have a big fan that goes on them. But the night's cool, and they like that. So. Um, and I don't have to worry about bugs. We had squirrels and, all, and raccoons. So I don't have to worry about that. And I brought a couple in to show you. Now, if I was to um, dump some of the bark out of this, I'll just do that down here. Now, I don't do this previous. This bark is very dry. But I just want you to see what's happening in here. So this is very dry bark, probably drier than it could, should, or could be. But has it hurt them? No. No, they're fine. They're growing. They're getting lots of new leaves. And uh, watering day is usually Sunday or Monday. So like I say, this is what they look like after... Oops, I'm always dropping something. So we'll put that there. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to show you is these were pots I found with nothing in them, if you remember. And I took that, the coconut matting, coconut hair matting, I think C-O-I-R, I don't know how I pronounce that. I always get it wrong. But anyway, and I, I cut it around a piece and I'd made this and I sewed a little piece onto the side here so that when it hung, it uh, was good. So they're hanging out in the patio. I brought them in to show you. They love these pots and if I see more of them, I'll be picking them up. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> you little rascal. I love to see that. It just always seems so so natural and uh, things are looking good they're getting new leaves they're still nice and firm yes see there's an older leaf that suffered and went limp and it will stay like that but all the new leaves are going to come in really nice so we have those and here's a little one here's the little one getting a nice new leaf made the same way and if I see more of these, because I can hang them from my pot hanger that I put in this window. Now, I brought some orchids in um, from outside just for this video. And 
Uh, this window is way too hot. Most of the time, that blind, this blind, is down. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's down. Because it's just too hot for us and anything in this window. Now, um, I just did this so you could see. So This is one that got saved. The leaves are still really firm. All the leaves had fell off except two. I thought I was going to lose it. It's just in bark, get normal care how I do it. And it has a beautiful new leaf coming plus in bloom. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now, here's my slipper orchid. Now I've never had slipper orchids before. And this is the one, if you saw the video, where I, excuse me, I unwrapped them. I dropped it on the floor and I thought, oh, uh oh. And you know what? Maybe the drop did it good. It uh, had a little bit of stress. And sometimes a little bit of stress of different kinds will encourage something to bloom. So uh, I'm really hopeful. Now, this is always tricky to get this in here. There we go. Yeah. We have it coming up. And we have a nice little shoot coming. Where are we? Yeah. Nice little shoot coming. And they're healthy. And this is Hung Shang Bay Hung Shang Colossum. And I want you to also see what I've done here, or Jack has done, my savior. Um, <laughs> He is taking one of those clamps. Now, the real small ones don't work as good. This is about as small as you want to go. And all he did was take the normal orchid uh, staking spike, and he braised it onto the end of one side. And uh, it makes a beautiful spike without hurting the roots. I can just clamp it on. But after I clamp it on, I just wrap some copper wire around it to hold the one that was falling down where I clamp it on. They make beautiful, um, he's going to make me some more. He made me a few, but he's going to make me some more. He just doesn't know it yet. So it's nice and I can stick the little steak in there because I haven't made a butterfly for this one yet. But uh, um, wow, I'm really looking forward to this too. So um, I have some old books that I went um, went by, but it's just uh, Bark and um, uh, Perlite, and I put in chopped up, if you use the mortar from old bricks, and I read it in an old book, someday I'll bring the, uh, my books that I do use out, and I'll show you the books I do reference to, uh, besides the internet. And uh, it's a very old book. There's a set of two. One is missing. And uh, there was a slipper. And this older fellow, he said, chop up the old mortar. And Jack did that for me. And we put it in here. And they get the calcium. And I think that was uh, what really did it. So that was the other thing I wanted to show you. And... Uh, Here's some other ones from outside. They're getting nice leaves, even though, I want to show you. <clears throat> I think sometimes um, if the leaves are limp when we start, and you can see way back one of, the, one of the first leaves, if I go this way maybe. These are the first leaves, and they're limp. And they never recover a lot, um, but uh, the new leaves, and these are outside too. See the nice little roots coming? And uh, on this side too. There we go. Um, the new leaves are exceptional. So it's something we have to kind of accept and be patient with. Um, because as soon as they get used to it, 
Same with this one where these ones were limp, but the nice new hard leaves. They will come. Um, it's just something you put up with until the leaves come and uh, you've got nice healthy plant. And anyway, those older ones will soon turn yellow and uh, drop off. So um, those, oh, I'd like to show you something else. In the winter, when I keep my uh, plants in the house, I always use this mister bowl, and I call it my nursing station. And uh, I don't know, maybe I need to push it over a little. Hold on. We'll do that. We'll move it over. There we go. Now, we were at the thrift store and found a small matching fountain. And actually, the the um, the black box and plug-in part worked. The no, the mister no longer worked, but it was only two dollars. And I thought, well, isn't that nice? Because I always have a nursing station where I keep an orchid in here, and uh, that way it kind of matches. And in the winter, I can put ones there and all around. So. I have been having some fun, and uh, thank you for everybody that's uh, uh, always messaging me, and I get to I get to know you like a friend. Uh, I really appreciate it, and I'm hoping that I'll get a night video done. I keep saying I'm going to do it because I want to show you some of the different ways that I light up the evenings and. Uh, just make them a little more enjoyable, but if I would quit falling asleep, <laughs> um, if I have a really good movie, uh, usually after supper and we've done a few evening chores, that's our time and, and um, we relax. There's no more work, but uh, after the relax period and before we go to bed when it's still dark, I have to show you the lighting. And I've been meaning to and I haven't forgotten, so there's that too. And thank you for all the new subscribers too. Um, <laughs> glad to have you along. And hopefully there will always be something interesting happening around here. I'm finishing the guitar on Jimmy. Uh, last steps. I think we should have him out by the beginning of August, so we've got that to look forward to. And um, I think that's all I can think of right now. And thank you again. And I missed you. <laughs> so I'm glad I survived the little tiny attack by a wasp. And I'm glad I got to be with you again. And uh, that'll be it for today. And uh, we'll see you sooner next time. Bye.